Hi, this is Arpan Gupta and today I will discuss about uh, how you can use Python programming language for data science and what do you need to begin uh, for data science. So what uh, libraries you would require for Python. So you do not have to write everything from the scratch. There are already built uh, libraries and modules in Python which you can just use for data science. So it is more easier to use the libraries than to write everything from scratch. So what are the libraries, most common libraries which are used by data scientists? So let us first discuss what are the most important libraries. So these are the Python libraries. First four, this is for data science. And uh, for data science, what they are being used, I will explain one by one. So first is NumPy, second is SciPy pandas and then scikit-learn these four ones are most common used for machine learning and data science now for visualization you mostly use matplotlib and seaborn so there are some low level libraries like numpy so scipy is something which is built on top of numpy and similarly like seaborn Seaborn is built on top of matplotlib. What does that mean? It means that if you have matplotlib, you can write, you can uh, do the same thing in matplotlib as you do in Seaborn, but in matplotlib, it will take more lines of code because it is a low level library. So let's discuss what is NumPy. So NumPy is a library which is being used for storing vectors and multidimensional arrays. It can be two dimensional or three dimensional or any dimensional array and the matrices. So whenever you have a data and you, you need to store all those data in forms of vectors or arrays or matrices, because ultimately all of those data becomes a number and you have to convert whether it is a text data, whether it is a video data, whether it is a voice data or any kind of data you have you first need to convert all those data into numbers and those numbers are either stored as a vectors or arrays or matrices for doing number of mathematical operations so under the hood everything is just mathematical operations of the numbers and these are the structures which are using the vectors arrays and matrices and numpy is the library which is being used for all these data structures now, now what is being uh, SciPy is used for? Now, SciPy is used for linear algebra, differential equations, numerical integration, and also being used for optimization of different machine learning algorithms. So you have uh, algorithms like linear regression, logistic regression, or you have support vector machine, you have different kind of machine learning algorithms where you optimize using some kind of algorithm like a stochastic gradient descent and if you want to write those uh, optimization yourself then you can use the scipy uh, library to optimize those algorithms so whatever you do in using the scipy can be done using the numpy also but scipy is built on top of numpy so it is more easier to work with scipy than numpy for a specific use case like optimization or something like that so if you do the optimization in scipy it will take say two lines if you do the same thing in numpy it may take 10 lines of code so that is the thing depends on what you want to do and now what is being pandas is used for so whenever you have a data in the tabular format that is that means you have some rows you have some columns you store that data in the for data structure like data frames and all those uh, the structures like data frames are inside this pandas library so with the help of pandas you can just uh, manipulate this data structure in the um, by like sorting filtering grouping aggregating you can do all these kinds of operations on the data frame so you have the data you have the rows and columns you can do all these operations using the pandas if you do using the numpy so it may take uh, more lines of code and so it is easier to use pandas for uh, data manipulation 
and uh, some, you sometimes have the missing data in the data so you want to may want to impute that data so using pandas it's just few lines of code you can just impute that data imputation means that means whatever the missing data is there just to fill in those missing data with some uh, with some sense which makes sense uh, for your data because it depends on data to data now let's discuss about what is matplotlib so matplotlib is also used in machine learning and data science but uh, it is specifically it is actually used for uh, visualization so whenever you have data you want to see the data in the form of some uh, some visualization like a scatter plot line plot bar charts because all those numbers you can see in just one figure so it is easier to do data visualization using matplotlib so you don't have to write everything from scratch in python but uh, just you have to install this matplotlib library in your and just import that matplotlib library after that you just have to write few lines of code and uh, you're done with the, the different kinds of plots like density plot line plot scatter plot all kinds of plots are there the similar thing is happening in the seaborn but the seaborn is built on top of matplotlib it is basically the same as I told yeah, the same thing which you do in Seaborn may take only two lines but in matplotlib it might take 10-12 lines of code it's just for an example so Seaborn is actually creating more attractive visualization and also it is a high level higher level than matplotlib higher level I mean to say it, it takes it is already written and you don't have to write more lines of code so, so most of the times you use matplotlib but for any specific kind of data visualization some customized visualization you might need to use seaborn because in matplotlib you have to write uh, more lines of code just to avoid writing more lines of code you might uh, use the seaborn so this is uh, the most common libraries which you need to Im install in your desktop or laptop and after that you just import and you can start using yeah so one uh, this this is scikit-learn this scikit-learn is basically used for the machine learning that is being used for machine learning algorithms so once you have the data you have read the data using the pandas library in the data frame after that you start fitting different kinds of machine learning models using the scikit-learn so again you don't have to write all the algorithms from scratch linear regression logistic decision tree random forest all those are written already in the scikit-learn library you just have to import those models and you have to fit to, uh, into your data yeah of course uh, when you have data you have to first visualize you have to understand the data whether your data makes sense and which kind of model makes sense for well, that is a theoretical part you have to understand and after that you know that which model is best for your specific data and what is the problem and what you want to optimize then you can go for a specific machine learning algorithm which is being written in scikit-learn so i i will be making more videos on each of them and i have already um, uh, created uh, some videos on machine learning how to apply machine learning algorithms like decision tree random forest on different kinds of data you can have a look on my youtube channel uh, so my name is Arpan Gupta you can just subscribe uh, to my channel and you can just uh, post your comment if you have any questions thanks for watching this video